Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and this is the tier list that I debuted and updated for you guys about three weeks ago when we were back after taking a little, you know, five day hiatus or four day hiatus from uploading videos on uh, MFF. And you guys, you know, reacted really positively. There's a ton of support, and I thought that the meta tier list was a really good representation of where the characters were in the game. I added in all of the characters from, you know, the Carnage and Venom symbiote update, from the Dark Avengers update. And we really tried to highlight them all and do do our best to sort of, you know, pin down where all the characters were. And Null was in the game at that point. Null was a boss that you could fight at that point in the game. However, the rewards for fighting Null just were not reasonable. And it just wasn't worth it at all to play Null. Null was more like a trophy. Null was more like just something that you practice just to experience something way more difficult than any of the other content of the game. And then they went ahead and they improved the rewards dramatically against Null, and that has given a lot of players, not every player, but it's given a lot of players things to work for. And in so doing, right, with, with a bunch of players now turning their heads and being like, you know what, I want to build my account towards Null, I want to build these characters or whatever to beat Null, it has created new value for characters that didn't have as much value. It's also forced us to the, the sort of awkward conversation of devaluing other characters because they just don't do as much and they don't they don't produce as much value against null right so we've we've been basically given a new litmus test this new lit litmus test for our tier threes and our awakening characters to see how good they are up against null so i made some changes to the meta tier list this is almost entirely based on null so if you don't play null or if you haven't been following any of the null content these changes to the tier list may confuse you that's understandable but I think that this will make sense to people who play Null and make sense to people who have tried a lot of their roster against Null. And this does go sort of hand in hand with my um, Null difficulty chart that I made that I've updated and that I made a video about maybe a week ago where I put all of the characters and I sort of put their difficulty like easiest to hardest in terms of beating Null. So I'm going to show you guys the new tier list here. Boom. It looks similar to the old tier list except i've moved a lot of characters over into the true gods category and the reason for that is highlighting characters that can do null well has created a lot more value for characters that didn't have as much value before so i'll, I'll talk about that in a minute i just want to talk about the other changes to this tier list the other changes you're going to see are that i've gotten rid of the crazy dps uh, tag. I just felt like this tag wasn't really doing anything. It's like, yeah, these characters have, you know, most of the characters turns out in true gods are crazy DPS. Well, who would have thought, right? And then characters in God light, they also have crazy DPS. And then no one else has it in the rest of the, uh, the tier lists. It's, it was just way too straightforward, way too obvious. It just really wasn't helping anyone. And so I replaced that with a much more, um, helpful icon, which is relies on debuffs. And it's this blue icon with a white arrow pointing down. It's a little small and maybe a little bit hard to see on mobile, but essentially it is characters like Holiday Lady Deadpool, characters like um, Silver Surfer, uh, Professor X, who can be very good characters, but their value can somewhat depend on their ability to apply debuffs. And so, you know, Tier 2 Professor X and even Tier 3 Professor X, so, so good in regular world boss. So, so good against Ebony and Cull Obsidian because he just locks them down completely for the whole fight and it's super safe. Now, Professor X is not bad against Null and he's not bad against Galactus, but he definitely loses a step. He's he's definitely just a little bit worse than, than he was because he can't apply any of those debuffs and he can't lower your mind resistance to, to combo with the fact that all of his skills deal mind damage, right? That's really where the synergy comes from. So he loses that aspect of his synergy. Holiday Lady Deadpool, the, the most perfect example, absolutely demolishes stage 99 of world boss and then can barely do stage one of null and so that sort of difference needs to be highlighted in the game with this sort of icon so for the most part not not exclusively but for the most part characters that re rely on the um, debuff this this debuff down like all defense down or, or some sort of elemental resistance down they usually don't have another way or another good way of boosting their damage Deadpool does not have any accumulation or any other, you know, big time self buffs. Professor X does have accumulation, but he doesn't have those big, you know, 50-50 buffs with the attack and the defense and the crit rate and stuff like that, like some of these other newer characters do. So that is why. There's not that many characters that require it, but I just wanted to highlight those characters specifically because then you'll have a better idea why these characters, like, you know, Scarlet Witch, so good for regular world boss, really bad against Galactus, not that good against Null. There's a reason for that. Relies on debuffs. So... 
Let's go ahead and copy this page and we're going to send it over and replace it with this one. Boom. So now, oh, I just have to delete these characters here who are duplicated. That's terrifying. And uh, now we are ready to talk about the changes. So the changes, oh, we have to just do this here as well. The, change the changes, like I said, pretty much exclusively target characters who are going to be able to do really, really well against Null um, versus characters who, although have a lot of value, cannot do as well or struggle against Null. And particularly in the True Gods category, I decided it was important to try and rank these characters. So although Holiday Lady Deadpool is still at the top um, of the of the speed class, I think that it's pretty it's a pretty tight race now. And Quicksilver actually moved up to True Gods because of Quicksilver's production against Null. So yeah, that's that's basically what you want to know as well for this category is that the characters are ranked. Now, there may be a smaller or a larger gap between the top and the bottom. Like, for example, between Moon Knight, Apocalypse, Carnage, and Venom, there's not very much of a gap. Moon Knight and Apocalypse really only get a lot of points over Carnage and Venom because they're better for ABX and squad battle. But it's very, very close. The four of these characters are very, very closely um, suited for content, and they have very similar damage outputs. And Carnage actually does more damage, in my opinion, uh, against against Null than Apocalypse does. But Apocalypse does some other things better than he does. Um, Hulk, on the other hand, struggles a lot against Null. Basically can't do Null at all. He's been reduced to just a leadership. So pretty much only being uh, PvP focused, he can't really call himself a true god anymore. So Hulk needed to be downgraded, unfortunately. Um, as far as the blast types go, Doctor Strange still holds the crown. But Moonstone is very hot on his heels. Moonstone might actually be the best blast character in the game which is crazy she does everything squad battle abx world boss null galactus everything danger room extreme she's the best character in the game i think for danger room extreme it's scary how much damage she puts out so you know what i actually might just move her right now she might actually be better than dr strange it's 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 crazy to say but yeah really the only thing he has on her is he has a dedicated abx day she has dedicated abx days he has a leadership I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know how I can justify Doctor Strange being better than Moonstone. I don't. If any of you guys out there have, uh, you know, have a reason to put Doctor Strange above Moonstone, honestly, I think I just did that. I think I just did that. And then uh, Jean Grey here down at the bottom. I left Jean Grey in True Gods because she can still do really well in PvP. She can still kill Sentry and stuff like that. But she's hanging on by a thread. I'm not saying this because I want her to get another uniform. I'm just saying that her placement on this list, there's a big gap between Sharon Rogers and Jean Grey at this point in the game because Jean Grey is not the best or even the second best PvP character in the game anymore. And she cannot even perform on any level comparatively to these guys in PvE content. Um, but she is there, although I did now give her the tier three tag because she needs tier three. Essentially, without her tier three, she won't be able to do PvP, which means that, I mean, maybe she, maybe you have some Jean Greys out there who can get some kills, but the majority of the time, you're just not going to have enough damage anymore against Sentry and, you know, tier three Silver Surfer with his uniform and a CTP of regen. So the tier three tag is, is more appropriate now for her. Um, and then for the, uni for the universals, for the unicorns, I was going to say, Odin taking the top spot. Yeah. He, his performance against Null is insane. It's way better than Sentry's. Yeah. So despite Sentry being more expensive than Odin, this kind of blew my mind. Odin just, just dismantles Null. Just dismantles him. And Sentry, even with a CTP of Rage, I've got a CTP of Rage on my Sentry, and he doesn't perform as well as I would have hoped. I don't know. Maybe I need to get his gears to 25. I'm not doing that anytime soon. But I've, I haven't heard anybody clearing stage 9 of Null with Sentry or stage 10. And I've seen people clear stage 10 with Odin. So, yeah, take that for what it's worth. But Odin, PvE-wise, is 100% the top dog in the game for Universals. 100% the top dog in the game now for Universals um, overall. Obviously, if you're going to look at individual game modes, he might suffer a little bit more. Like, you know, Shadowland versus Silver Surf or whatever. But, yeah. Sentry and Silver Surfer coming up next, two and three, because they just have much more PvP value than Odin, but they do fall a little bit short PvE-wise. Then you got Ghost Rider, Beta Ray Bill, Dormammu, and then Medusa bring up the, the rear. Medusa here, I feel like I'm giving this to her, but she could actually be here in God Light with Black Bolt, Thanos, Nimrod, Captain Marvel, Molecule Man, and Richard Rider Nova. 
by the way this is not this is this is the final um placement for molecule man this is not a temporary placement for him he's not very good even at tier three he does not do anything well except pvp that's it and even pvp you're better off you're better off just focusing on central like building a, a team of silver surfer sentry and and colossus or silver surfer sentry and Jean Grey or whatever is going to cost you way less than molecule man and is going to put you know be 99 percent as effective he's not even that meta breaking for pvp the way that sentry is and sentry doesn't even need a pvp build to be good in pvp whereas molecule man absolutely needs a pvp build you absolutely need to give him a regen and all that stuff to to get him to survive in pvp because his stats are not that high and his damage is an absolute joke so unfortunately the most expensive character in the game relegated to almost almost high utility all honestly i you could definitely make an argument for putting him in high utility so that is a big letdown but with that being said i wanted to uh show you guys this new list i think this really highlights the top dogs in the game but it also gives you more characters to aim for i felt like with the old tier list one of the problems was this there was just too few characters in this list i don't want to, there to be i don't want every character to be a true god but at the same time it's nice now to see more value in characters like quicksilver and venom and more value for these other characters rather than having a really really short list of just the same 10 or so characters rotating you know back and forth in the meta like a carousel you know sharon rogers gene gray doctor strange you kind of thing so yeah hit me up in the comments down below let me know what you think of these changes to the tier list largely changed just the true god and godlike category which is why i really didn't talk about the other ones they honestly didn't change at all but yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care